Hi everybody, it's Sadie Ben from Elemental Fitness here. I'm just doing a very short, um, embarrassingly geeky type video while we do a short break from the pouring rain outside and clearing a barn ready for conversion into our gym. Um, it's to do with the Trex 10, which is a handheld GPS system from, from uh, Garmin, which if you can just see, we've actually managed to put mapping on, which is what this is about today enough so that you can use it for um, a reference good for running it records all your uh, gpx files for import up to um, strava um, so it's a really good backup tool it's also a pretty good tool in its own right now it's not going to replace your paper maps um, and i don't think any gps ever should um, but it's there as a a reference for you um, and we'll show you how you can do that now um, so we're going to drop on to screenshots and screen uh, capture in a moment. All I would say, though, is remember that this thing cost me £44, I think it was, off Amazon. Um, if you compare that to some of the other stuff that's on the market at the moment, that is in order of 10, 12, 13 times less expensive than some of the wristwatches that actually will tell you pretty much the same thing. Average speed, time, etc. Okay, so without any further ado, we'll start geeking. Okay, so first thing, I'll hand you to the screen. Bye. Okay, what we're going to do then is talk you through the absolute horrible geekery of this. My apologies if I make a few mistakes because of the fact that I'm still um, working my way around how Macs work. And sometimes they're great, sometimes they're a pain in the neck. Okay, so what we're looking at now is two things. This is the Garmin. Now, this Garmin now has no mapping on it whatsoever. Because this, on my hard drive, or my desktop, the GMAP bit, forget the M at the end, that's done it so I don't confuse folders. Um, that is actually the map that was originally on the Garmin when it turned up. Notice the IMG bit at the end. That's what we're going to have to convert any map we do into so it can read it. Now, the Garmin device can only read that address name minus the M. And that sits on there. So if I want to have any form of map on my Garmin, I need to put the map on there in a format you can read with that address name. So the way I do it is I will copy, I will, I will create a map, which I'll show you how to do in the moment. I'm reverse engineering this so you understand where it comes from. Okay, and currently I'm calling it local IMG because it's local to me, the map I've got on. So I will then move that onto my desktop by copying it so I don't lose my originally named mapping. I then rename it into that G map B map address or okay I should then be able to either just pick it up and drop it but I'm having a lot of problems of doing that at the moment on my Mac it's gonna work my god okay and just drop it straight onto my Garmin now obviously Garmin's work on a, a very old USB um, micro mini jack not the new two or three USB system so it's a lot slower but it's done so that is now sat on my Garmin and I will then be able to use it on the mapping side as, as I feel fit, fit I haven't lost any local okay um, and what I can easily do is delete it off there now the point to note is you have to go into your um, trash to get rid of the um, previous mapping or anything you've deleted off your Garmin because if you don't and this includes tracks waypoints everything you delete off your Garmin using your Mac if you don't get rid of it off the um, or empty it on the um, trash folder for some bizarre reason it just claims it's still sat on your device and the device memory just disappears um, I was sat here the other day trying to figure out why I had nothing on my Garmin and yet still had no memory on it it's because everything in the uh, trash folder was still registering really weird Okay, so how did I get to that point? Well, I actually used a thing, a converter called the um, OSM to IMG converter, which comes from this company here. So if you go on the on the internet and go for Goto's org, um, you'll find this. Then once you've found it, you can then uh, use this on your computer. And I've dropped it all into the same folder um, just for, for ease of use. The point is, is sometimes it will kick up and say when you've downloaded it onto your Mac that you need something called a Java tool developer. That's fine. Just search it out, go onto the Java site, download it onto your Mac and it will work beautifully in one go. So just follow the instructions and you'll be fine. 
but how do I get the folders, the files, to make, for this to convert to make these, which means then I can put them onto this. Okay, so I'm gonna minimize my Garmin. You understand that part now. Okay, we're now into this bit. So I go on to something called OpenStreetMap.org. Now they're really good, OpenStreetMap.org. Um, what you can do is go to pretty much any part of the world. In this case, then I'm using um, uh, an area around Scarborough, for example, or Whitby, but it could just as easily be um, Moscow, it could just as easily be the Arctic. It covers the entire world, and I'll pan out just so you can see what we're talking about here. Now, it's not ordnance survey quality mapping. Okay, I'll make that quite clear now. But as I said earlier, this is meant as a backup stroke interest tool, not necessarily as a primary navigation mapping aid, even though it will track where you are. Okay, so what I'm going to do with this is get it down to a size or whatever size I want to play around with. Now, if I go back a little bit, okay, and export again, um, for example, I can also go and search, I should be able to, there we go, and just search that way around, okay. If I go to export, however, you'll get a couple of different options. You can either export what it can see, which is those grid references, or you can get a box by clicking manual, and you can drop it down to the size you want. Word of warning is, though, if it's too big, what should happen, and I say too big, it's too... <laughs> sounds a lot of work this time. Okay, um, if it gets too big, what will happen is, is it will turn around and say, I can't do it. Um, and if that's the case, then you go to something called Overpass, which is this bit here, and click that. It does exactly the same process, but just allows you to download bigger and bigger maps. Now, to give you an idea, the whole of the North York Moors came in at, um, once I finished uh, the conversion process, at something like half a megabyte. So you can actually put quite a large amount of scale onto the, um, onto the handheld device and still not compromise the memory. And here it is, sat in, downloads. Now, it's always known as map, but if you look at it where it says OSM, okay, um, now six and a half megabytes clearly will take up most of the memory on your computer, on your handheld. But the point is with this, the converter turns it to an image which drops the memory size hugely down and we'll just go through that now. So I'm gonna come out of OpenStreetMap.org, okay. I'm gonna go back onto Finder, to my downloads, he says. Come on, Mac, play ball, there we go. Okay, so there it is, it's a text, um, Correction, there we go. It comes out in a number of different formats for some reason, but they all work just as well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna copy that, or you can move it, depending on how adept you are with a Mac. Okay, I'm gonna drop it into my um, mapping folder. Okay, and then I'm going to pick it up and drop it. Drop it on top of the Mac OS uh, Mac converter, and it will give me a request for a name. Now, in this case, um, I think I'm just going to call it Whitby as a folder and convert. And there we go. It's now done it. It's converted to Whitby. It's sat on my desktop at the moment, but that's fine. So now we're into this IMG. You then go through the process we described earlier, renaming it, and off it goes onto your uh, Garmin. Okay, after you've gone through all of that perturbations, this is basically what you get. I'm trying to hold it so you can see it without the screen backlit on because that just takes it out for some bizarre reason. So you can either go in close or you can go out and then you end up with more and more detail being going to the background. Okay, so what I've done is I've put a, a block around us on of those that I'm going to use. And as I say, it covers all the major features. It will cover most of the uh, tracks and so forth and small roads around us. Um, so it's a useful piece, okay, but it shouldn't replace your primary. But just remember, guys, that this is 40 odd pounds worth of kit and a bit of know-how on your computer. Um, and it gives you pretty much everything you'll get on a wristwatch, but with the added bonus of the fact that you can throw this in the pack and it'll, you know it'll probably work.